Hi, hello, my name is Ollie Bliss and this is my channel um, called Book Draw. For those who don't know, I enjoy looking at queer friction and making little artworks out of it. Uh, today it has been a little while, so I am doing a little bit of a catch up and I'm also going to do a wrap up. So you can see which things that I've been reading over the last couple of months. During November I didn't really read too much because I was just too busy with work. Now I've had a really nice and long Christmassy break. So I'm excited just to share with you the type of things that I've been up to. Over that break I was um, just down at home with my folk. I got some lovely gifts including this little man here who you will be seeing sometime in future. Uh, for those who don't know this is a little maquette which helps um, with uh, drawing um, but I will be using him and, uh, in different poses which I'll be incorporating as starting points for drawings in future. My partner has also brought me this incredible light which is really quite blinding um, and <laughs> this is the first time I'm using it so I hope this is adding to the quality of the videos for you at home. Those are two little fun gifts which I had which I thought I'd share with you. Um, I also then went over to uh, Paris and spent a week over there. Um, it, we were actually staying just outside of Paris itself. We only um, really spent one morning in Paris itself um, and the rest of the time we were just hanging out in our chalet reading playing pool, swimming, and um, drinking and eating far too much. I did go out and spend a day at Disneyland, uh, which was very cool because I've not actually been there in like 20 years. I'm sporting this, which is an original t-shirt. So this is vintage because this is 20 years old. Um, when I first went there as a kid, this was um, a, a, like a, a long t-shirt 90 and um, I am sporting it today in uh, honour of um, that moment in time when I was very tiny, uh, went to the park and it didn't even have the studios at that point and so going back, being actually able to go on rides like Space Mountain because I was actually tall enough this time, uh, also being able to check out the Hollywood Terror Tower uh, thing and doing new rides like the Star Wars Tour, Ratatouille, Crush were all really great fun rides which um, I did, wasn't even really aware of. Um, so I'm glad that I was kind of pushed into uh, going to uh, Disneyland because I was kind of like, really? We could be going to Paris. But I've also done Paris in the past so it was nice to do something a bit more silly and fun and, um, um, and cultural on a different way. So in terms of the reading, reading which I've done, let's start off with The Sparshall Affair. This is by um, Ali Hollenhurst. So I actually did this as a kind of buddy read with a, a group of other booktubers which is really nice. We were using Voxer to talk to each other. It kind of fell apart a bit in terms of the commitment that was there because uh, I think people had colds and uh, some people were a bit too um, tied up with other stuff to be able to carry it on but for the conversations that I did have with people it was really nice to actually share thoughts and uh, in terms of what we all thought of this book. I ended up actually listening to this on audio which I'd really recommend to people because uh, the person who narrates it, I will add below because I've forgotten his name, um, he does some really good accents and it really brings uh, different characters to life a lot more. In terms of the actual story, um, this takes place over three different time periods focuses on David Sparshall, his university experiences. Uh, it has those very intensive um, first uh, feelings of incredible passion and delight in terms of having uh, a slightly obsessive fancy over Mr. David Sparshall himself. Then goes through the eyes of Johnny, who's his son, um, and there is an awareness that um, previously his father had had some sort of scandalous affair. He's growing up and there's you're experiencing it in the summertime. It's very kind of fleeting and you're just seeing a nice little moment on a holiday where he's like exploring these new desires. Later on uh, you see um, Johnny uh, growing up a bit more. He uh, is experiencing some of the underground parts of uh, club culture and uh, gay nightlife uh, and it introduces interesting things like um, the fact that they had to have tokens um, and food in order to be allowed to uh, let them serve drinks and the general costs of putting your coat in your cloakroom and how that has then dramatically changed to the way in which people cruise nowadays and that uh, happens in the later half of the book when um, uh, Johnny is a lot older, he's refinding really himself in the way that he interacts with men. He meets up with this younger guy who is looking at other men through his phone 
um, and kind of uh, looking out for new hookups and he's at this distance where he's kind of like wow queer culture has really changed and uh, gay men's sex lives, the way in which they can seek and uh, find each other is totally different to the way it used to be and, uh, and it's uh, about those passages of time and uh, how that changes and I really enjoyed how that there is this sense of holistically looking at time. Anyway, talked about that too much in the wrap The next one I wanted to talk about was Night Fox Gambit. Now this um, I read uh, because I fell in love with it and the idea of it from watching Adriana's channel um, on Perpetual Pages. If you haven't checked out her channel, please do. She is absolutely awesome. Uh, she's so right on uh, everything that she um, reviews, I'm instantly interested in. So this is um, quite a complex one. Um, I think I'm going to do a video which uh, looks at the magical structure and the fraction system uh, because it's really quite complicated and if you, it, um, it only really explains it and introduces it 30 sort of pages into the book. So when you're first reading these different fractions of, of this, this world, this universe, um, it, you're kind of like... What? Who? 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 What groups are these and how do they inform each other and how does this structure exist? It's not as clear as something like um, Divergent, which is really easily explained. The story focuses on Captain Cal Sharice. She is the Cal Captain for the Ash Hawks, and they're one of the six factions which make up this kind of magic system and this political structure. She has to go on this mission uh, which is looking at calendrical rot in this fortress, which is the Fortress of um, Scattered Needles. Um, it's a really, really intensive ride on this one. I absolutely love the world building in it. The space battles are really epic and the magic that's involved in it is really quite gruesome and gory, uh, but really imaginative. She basically joins up with um, this fella <laughs> called uh, Jado, who was um, a really highly regarded war hero who won every single battle, but then suddenly like turned on his own system. And uh, part of the story is about the mystery of why he turned on them. He was placed into something called the Black Cradle, which basically preserved his soul. And um, uh, he is like ancient years old, I can't remember exactly how many years old he is now, um, but his soul can be used and drawn out of the Black Cradle and, and kind of instilled as a layer on top of um, uh, the, the captain. And so she's walking around with this kind of shadow soul of this fella and he informs her strategies when she's having these battles and part of um, the the actual dialogue that goes through this is how he's influencing her and how she has to make judgments for herself but also how part of his soul is kind of combining with hers um, and I don't want to spoil uh, the ending for it, I will be looking at this in more detail in future because I just thought it was a really gripping ride. The next one I want to talk about is The Beginning of the World in the Middle of the Night by Jen Campbell. Of course, Jen Campbell is the most wonderful and amazing booktuber and part of the reason why I came on to um, being on booktube itself. I personally don't um, enjoy short stories um, often because I I'm too greedy, I want more, I, I will always want the story to carry on, I want to know what happens next, I want to see their relationships develop and blossom, and I always feel cheated when they're taken away and they're too short and uh, sweetly constructed. This however didn't do that, they were each independent little stories which were just perfectly pocketed and, and bloomed and uh, had the sense of fairy tale and wonder within, uh, within each of them. I actually really enjoyed one of the um, shorter ones called In the Dark, which is a conversation between a man and a woman. This pilot basically appears in her kitchen, it's in her house, and they're having this conversation and it's all kind of like slightly removed and instead of being like, get out of my house, she tries to enter it into, oh, okay, so you're here. We can have a conversation with each other. There is something which is so wonderfully subtle in that the tone of that conversation, and there is a sense of um, a threat in terms of he has invaded her home, and she has very little power or means of protecting herself, her son, um, or any really understanding of why he's there. Is he actually a threat? What what's the purpose of him being there? So instead, she's 
and tries to reach out to him by just offering him some food and she inquires a little bit about him and she's trying to build a greater picture of him and is unable to because he's not um, willing to give anything over but then she introduces very subtly little bits of information about herself and he kind of from that just gets up and leaves um, but before he leaves there's this exchange in a look between them both something that's very intimate that is shared and I don't know for me and um, this is about humanity and um, uh, realizing that we are people and that um, everybody has the capacity or the potential to be kind to each other regardless of where they've come from what they're doing what their original intentions are there's the ability to have positive and affirming relationships with each other. Uh, there are lots of examples of how um, Jen basically um, uses uh, the fairy tales and um, metaphors um, to flesh out um, situations and have these kind of morals attached to them which are woven in subtly underneath. But I really enjoyed being able to dip in and out of this as I've been on trains and um, just having like five minutes to steal away and look at this. In some cases uh, I want to actually reread this because I feel like on a second reading I'm gonna uh, find more layers and uncover more things and I definitely think that she's um, put things in here which are there to explore and uncover and I find that really exciting in a book um, and it makes me kind of go oh maybe I should give um, short story is a bit more of a go. So yeah, this was lovely. This was really nice um, and it is something that is, is worth the hype. The next one is Vulnerable uh, Gods, which I previously talked about because it's by the wonderful Todd Wintermeyer. Um, and for those who don't know, this is a novel um, by Todd the Librarian. I've previously done the Todd tag, which I had in the uh, description below, so you can check that out as well. Uh, this is an awesome adventure. Joe and Helen are two uh, archaeologists and they, um, Virgil discovers this skull. The skull does something to Virgil uh, which basically ena enables him to make this biological uh, time machine. I feel like I can't go much further than that <laughs> in terms of the impact of what that does because it basically kind of informs the rest of the, the storyline. You have all these different individual characters who um, are facing something which is quite unknown and quite strange. Um, there's this man who's going around and killing people and you don't really know why. Death scene's quite graphic. The, their stories kind of begin to weave into each other and they build up to this very kind of intensive ride towards the end. Um, I was really here for the way he illustrated the characters and um, through the conversations that they had. I particularly enjoyed some of the, the wider characters. There was Otis who was um, uh, the kind of sheriff of the town and he's like, he's quite rotund and um, he's kind of perceived as the stereotypical sheriff who doesn't really know what he's doing and he's bumbling along and he doesn't properly solve the crimes. Whereas other characters like Virgil who is so easy to detest as a character and he makes you quite angry because uh, he's uh, the, like he feels that he is kind of above everybody else around him and he is like a really good bad character. This is a, a, an independently written and published book as well so in terms of like um, Todd wanted to um, uh, point out to me in terms of like um, uh, on a couple of pages the um, the numbering uh, goes off a little bit but I was like who cares you, you've created this thing by yourself. I actually just really enjoyed the story and I think that's far more important. So if you want something which you're gonna just be able to lap up and enjoy I recommend this book. Finally, the last one which I read is Ruby Food Drungle, which is by Rita Mae Brown. I absolutely loved this book. It had that really crisp, authentic um, first person uh, voice who was looking at the world um, and being able to kind of challenge it and be able to say, why do people act and behave this way? Surely we could be behaving in a different way. Uh, it focuses on M Molly Bolt who is young, headstrong um, girl who like 
it will not be told what to do. She's quite intelligent. She's quite savvy with her mindset. She is poor and she uh, also her parents are, are not her own. So she has these barriers which are put in her place. And it, the story is basically about how she rejects all the labels that are put upon her and how she tries to make um, the world work to her beat of her own drum. Um, her principles in her mind are just really authentic um, but also really like right on. This is a book which was created in the 70s and she's just like don't label me, don't um, put me in these, um, pigeonhole me in these ways. I can do this, I can be who I want, I'm not harming anybody around me, uh, you're the one who's trying to put me down, you're the one who's trying to make me behave to the way you think that I should and that's wrong and I was just like yes. Those are all of my books for a wrap up this time. Um, I enjoyed just uh, catching up with you guys, telling you a bit about them all. Hopefully in the future you will be seeing more video content with me. Uh, Cracking on with some more speed draws which I've got lined up uh, and some more tags and some more collaborations. So I will see you again.